2020 Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. If you could please first rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome. This is a public proceeding and unless the board specifically votes to go into an executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said tonight and view all the exhibits that are being presented. Please notify the chairperson if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. The board will work from a prepared agenda and will take up tonight's items in the following order. We're going to approve the minutes and the finding of facts from last month, from February. We have two appeals this month. Appeal number 2681 and a miscellaneous appeal for 79 Holmes Road and appeal number 2682, a special section appeal for 5 Landmark Road. And then we also have a request for an extension by A plus tents and rentals. Oh, tents and events. Okay. We'll do roll call first. Karen Chu? Here. Jane Siebert? Here. Melinda Torrin? Here. Stephen Port? Here. Chip Howe? Here. Mm. Jennifer Warren, Williams, Waters, and Susie Keynes, absent. Second. Okay. In each instance, the burden upon the applicant to demonstrate the compliance with each of the criteria or provisions of the applicable appeal. The board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all testimony has been heard, the chair will close the record and the board will adopt the finding of facts for each criteria and they and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof to meet the criteria. It is important to note that if any of the appeal or special exception criteria have not been met, the board must deny the appeal or the application. In many cases, the applicant or the landowner may have a personal problem, which has prompted the request for the variance, and please understand that this is not legally relevant to the appeal and no matter how sympathetic the board may be to the applicant's situation. After the board votes on the merits of each criteria, a motion may be made to approve the appeal, and if there is a second, discussion will follow. The board will then state conclusions of law based on the findings of facts to support a decision of that motion. A general vote will then be taken on the appeal. If the majority of the voting members present, present vote in the affirmative, the appeal is approved. If the majority of the voting members vote in the negative, the appeal is denied. The board's decision stands as the date of the vote was taken, regardless of the approval of the final written decision. Generally speaking, appeals for adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court within 45 days of the board's decision. Again, we remind everyone that this is a public proceeding and you have the right to hear and see what is happening. All persons speaking will be asked to first state their name and address or affiliation and all board members and interesting parties are asked to direct their questions to the chair. So first we have the approval of the minutes from the February 12th, 2020 meeting. Did everyone get a chance to review the minutes? Yes. yes. Does anyone have any questions, concerns, additions? I do not. No. Nope. Do I have a motion, motion to approve the minutes as written? Second. And second. second. All in favor? Okay. We have the written decision for Appeal number 2679, which is the variance appeal for the O'Reilly's at 14 Kent Street. Did everyone get a chance to read the findings of facts and conclusions yes. of law? Yes. Yes. Any additions or changes? I do not have any. I don't either. Nor do I. I have a motion. I'll move to approve appeal number 2679 as presented. I'll second. All in favor? And then we have the draft written decision for <laughs> appeal number 2680, which is the miscellaneous appeal for the Spray Corporation for the 395 Black Point Road. Did everyone get a chance to review those yes. findings? Yes. Those looks good to me. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve appeal number 2680 as written. Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Just one point of order, Madam Chair. Yeah. Do you want to appoint uh, Chip as a voting member tonight? Yes, Ooh. that's right. Absolutely. We are down a member, so Mr. Howe will be a voting member tonight. Right. 
<laughs> Who said these things have to be dry and not fun, right? <laughs> Um, so our first appeal tonight is appeal number 2681, which is a miscellaneous appeal by the Scarborough Fish and Game Association, which is located at 79 Holmes Road. I'm going to ask Mr. Longstaff first to give us a quick introduction, and then you guys can come up and give us some more background. The table is over there with the mic on it, in case you hadn't seen it. <laughs> That's the uh, makeshift podium. <laughs> yeah, so this is a miscellaneous appeal for an expansion of a non-conforming existing use. Um, Club, the Fish and Game Association has been before us in the past um, for other similar types of expansions, several outbuildings and, and improvements that they've made to their um, uh, shooting range and, and the facilities there. This uh, appeal is to expand the, the current main clubhouse um, and um, also to expand, I think, the pistol range um, on the, the, the uh, yeah, pistol range side of the building. So uh, they're also going to be improving the parking areas and adding some parking spaces and so on and so forth. So again, this this is a miscellaneous appeal for non-conforming use and the criteria that the board uses is the special exception criteria, which always causes confusion because it, it really kind of requires two different applications to come before you. Uh, but this is truly a miscellaneous appeal that uses the special exception criteria. So that's what we don't want to lose sight of. I'll turn it over to the, the Fish and Game Club. Good evening. I'm Steve Cart from Scarborough Fish and Game. <clears throat> Mike Kane is the club president. He's joining me tonight. Uh, we were, we're asking for permission to expand our current clubhouse for a few reasons. Um, we need to better accommodate our aging membership. We have uh, many seniors, we have a little over a thousand members, and we have uh, a great number of them are seniors. And while we currently are handicap accessible, and we have proper ramps and proper bathrooms, we in the main clubhouse, we share one restroom upstairs, the other one is downstairs. So you have to go outside, down a ramp, around the building to get to it. It's legally accessible, but it's not ideal. Um, our meeting rooms are, are very busy. We have right now Coast Guard and other entities, uh, security, uh, both state, federal, and uh, other groups that use our facilities routinely for training and off-campus matters. We support the law enforcement community. We generally don't charge them for their, their use. Um, we, don't, we donate that. Um, we have the Boy Scouts who use the facility routinely when other spaces aren't available. They come there. They're doing a winter camp in the next few weeks on our property in a safe zone. We have a designated camping area and they'll use the kitchen and they'll use the restroom in the clubhouse, which will again be expanded. Um, and just last night we had an annual, uh, uh, the youth group, our youth shooters, we had their annual awards presentation and we were very proud. Um, in the Junior Olympics, we had both the gold medalist in air pistol and air rifle, the gold medalist uh, female and male, we had five different youths shooting out of Scarborough that have qualified for Colorado. They're going to Boulder to the National Olympic Compound based out of the training they get in Scarborough. But right now, the kids are having to go to Augusta to shoot competitive events because our indoor range only has six lanes, so we can't host a match. So they can practice here, but they can't host a match. So the coaches who are all volunteers and the parents are having to consistently travel uh, to Augusta or well south out of state to compete. And this addition would allow us two, two more lanes or four more lanes rather, so we could host uh, Junior Olympic events at the facility to accommodate our kids program, which is just thriving. So that's the bulk of what we're doing. Our general meetings um, aren't intended to expand. Our membership is solid. Actually, it's decreasing slightly, but solid. So we're not trying to increase our flow. We're trying to better accommodate the folks who are members now and the community who uses it, such as the, uh, the uh, main guide service. One of the private guide groups is doing a nonprofit. They're training uh, first responders, police and fire, who have an interest in becoming a main guide. Uh, we just donated the room so we could reduce the price for the first responders. 
So they're going to get trained to be guides for fly fishing, canoeing, things in the Allagash region specifically, mm -hmm. and we have a group who's hosting that, and they're in our room. So we have all these competing uses, competing with our own um, hunter safety programs and other safety programs we teach. So we just need a little more elbow room. I appreciate the background, know nothing about your, your yes. organization at all. Thanks. So I think that was super that was helpful, helpful to, to, to get that background as well. Um, when they have the junior events, is that like a big event or is it just? No, yeah. um, we have, that's um, the one in Augusta, the state championship, because they're each regional. There was probably two dozen shooters Fair enough. and their parents. Yep. Uh, we currently host our first of the month shoots for the sporting clays. We'll have 150 shooters come for that every yeah. month. That's an outdoor event, doesn't use that particular building, but we have several things a month that are uh, literally 10 times that size. So there's no large gatherings in the okay. building. Good background. So as we said, we're gonna use the application for the special exception appeal. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I will read the criteria. I don't know if you wanna read in the answers that you provided um, mm -hmm. or just elaborate as you so please. Yep. I can just answer questions as they're around. Um, so A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reasons of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Um, we're going to use our existing septic system. We're going to uh, have a, an appropriate contractor expand it as need be in the current space. Uh, so we'll renovate what we have, but it's going to be in the same place. Okay. And we're going to have a similar volume because we're not increasing our usage. We're just going to add easier access for the folks to get to on each level. So we don't anticipate a higher number of people at any time, and there's no other output from the building. Uh, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Now, the, the building, which is the red on the plan on the board, is approximately from the nearest boundary to the east is about 440 feet from the nearest boundary. We have our own uh, substantial internal gravel road system, which are approximately 32, 36 feet wide. Uh, we have more than ample parking uh, directly around the clubhouse, both uh, gravel lots and when we renovate, we will have paved handicapped areas and handicapped ramps. So, uh, and our outlet is the same and the traffic volume is the same as it's been for many years. See, the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than in existing uses in the neighborhood. No, the use is the same. Same use, just better interior space for the, for the guests. C, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. No, there'll be all proper erosion control measures in place during construction. The grade on that part of our property is perfectly flat. There is no, no stream within hundreds of feet of the building, and we're only disrupting a very small, very, very small area just for the foundation. The gravel parking lot already exists. This is actually going in the impermeable parking lot area. Sure. And that's what the DEP already approved? It's our, that's, this is our approved plan, yes. That's our a long range plan. Uh, e, the proposed use will not will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Yes, it's we're not changing or adding our uses, we're just improving the quality of our events. And F, are you located in the shoreland zone? No, we are not. G, the applicant has a sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes, we've owned the property since 1948. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Yes. Um, what was my written answer? That I know there was a... The building is to be constructed by an approved contractor. Any conditions imposed by the board would be included in the construction contract. Yes. Yep. I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. 
yes, the building itself is self-contained. There's no notable noise from the building. And the indoor range that we're referring to is primarily an air pistol range, a typical what you would refer to as a BB gun, but they're extremely accurate Olympic grade firearms. Okay. And they, we do have the ability to fire uh, center fire and rim fire guns on that range, but it's not commonly used for that. board have any questions? I have a question. Oh. Um, what's the largest caliber round you can fire off on the indoor range? The indoor range we would use only uh, frangible ammunition which means non-lead so any uh, any of your standard handgun calibers 9 millimeter 45 40 um, we don't fire long uh, center fire rifles or anything indoors there strictly target it's co competitive target range. Great and um, what are your normal operating hours? Our, our written hours are generally 8 a.m. till sunset year-round. Um, we do extend courtesies to our neighbors of uh, you know, holidays and things. We, we back off and try to be quiet. And Mother's Day, Easter, other things, it's not policy, but it's courtesy, and we, we do our best with that. Great. And I guess to confirm... Um, the 12 by 60 expansion is strictly an indoor range. There are, there are no it's, strictly, it's generally barrier. a meeting room. The indoor range is just an addition so the kids can better utilize it. Mm -hmm. the, the indoor range exists now. Yeah, right. You're just um, expanding it, which can add four more lanes so yep. the kids don't have to travel so much. So we're going to increase the children's use of it right. in our youth program. But the meeting room is our primary goal. Great. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I do have a question. Uh, will you be expanding the uh, use of the outdoor uh, skeet range at all? No. Well, the skeet, you, you use the word skeet. We are we have, are adding a skeet range, which is a separate matter, a DEP approved. It's on the, the plan it was on five years ago. Mm -hmm. So there are two skeet ranges coming to the property to replace. We used to have three skeet ranges which shot into a wetland area in the 1950s, 60s, 70s. And we stopped utilizing it because the shot fall area, which is about 150 yards, was into a wetland. Right. So we, on our own, ceased using that, reclaimed that area, and now we're replacing only two of those ranges in an approved DEP area as an extension to the track ranges. Thanks. And that's not part of this project, but it is an ongoing project. Okay. Uh, one follow-up, too. Uh, you did mention that you are organized as a nonprofit organization. Is that yes. That, okay. That's something that wasn't in here that I didn't see anyway. Yes. Uh, and that's, that's very helpful information. So you are providing a lot of services to the, the general mm -hmm. community and, and also extended uh, services yes. beyond. Yes. Yes. Uh, and of charge. We have the, it depends on, there. we do have rental ranges for law enforcement. <coughs> uh, we actually have a vigorous rental range for LE only. Um, we have, for instance, the only 600-yard certified range in the state of Maine. So when the ships are in a uh, bath, for instance, getting refitted, they may send a sniper team down to Scarborough, and we have a gentleman, Bob Chandler, who runs that, and that we would have Navy SEAL snipers on our property mm -hmm. that come and practice. We would have state police. You know, any, any sniper who has to be certified has to come here. We have the only 600-yard range. So, so it's uh, indoor or outdoor? That one is outdoors. Okay. That's existed for... That's been there for, right. I don't know, 40 Thanks. plus years. <laughs> a big indoor. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it would be a large indoor range. Um, but we have, we have a, a 600 yard outdoor range that the law enforcement sniper teams use. We have a 100 yard LE range that the local police departments and uh, militaries, Coast Guard, use often. We have a 40 yard outdoor range, and we've just added two more rental ranges for law enforcement because they need them. Thank you. Yep. One of the criteria is about public safety, and I'm kind of curious. You know, I mean, people buy houses next to a range; they maybe have an understanding of what's happening. What's I mean, what sort of do the police are the police coming out? Are you getting complaints? No, we've not. We've had no complaints I'm aware of. Um, Mike's been president for years since our past president passed, and we've never had one on his watch. And I don't recall one prior to that. I've been a member for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Um, our precautions, we refitted our club um, when they built Cabela's. Grondon needed to get rid of those thousands of yards of soil, so we worked with the DEP in Grondon and we refitted our range. And all 
smaller ranges now predominantly shoot into the property. So it used to be a, a, any range had a road down the middle and you shot away from the road. Now we shoot into ourselves primarily and we have berms and we've had NRA folks in. We have grown and mix a very specific blend of ballistic sand which absorbs and has no ricochet, it has no splatter. So we use a very, very specific soil as noted by the Army Corps of Engineers. And our berms have been expanded to, Mike, what are we now, almost 30 feet? Roughly 30 feet, 25 so, is the berm and then another 10 feet by the wall and across the back. So we have a, each range has a, the target stands at a given height with strict rules on where you can shoot, where you cannot, and they have a red board below the target. You may not shoot below that board for any reason. And then above the targets, there is a substantial red board on the berm, probably 20 feet from the top, and you may never shoot above that. Mm -hmm. So that we will not have a bullet leave that property, period. And the, the ranges are positioned as such. Mm -hmm. So clearly you're generating noise, but there's been no complaints about the noise. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have no concept of how loud the social situation would be, to be honest, so. Mm -hmm. I do. I live nearby. <laughs> it's generally fine. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I was just thinking of beach. Do you get to shoot at the cars? It's <laughs> <laughs> not the right question to ask. Do we have any other questions before I open it up to the public? I don't have any. I don't. No? So I'm going to open it up to the public now. I don't know if there's anyone here tonight that would like to speak in regards to this appeal. Um, I don't know. It looks like we may have received an email. Um, did we receive any calls? I did not. That's no? The only I'll just say email. only email. Would you like me to read this? Um, you may read it if you wish, or we'll just enter it into the record. We, we, did, we did receive one email, which I have not read. Um, from... Brian Bosick. Does the board think I should read this into the record? Yes. I think so. Okay. Yeah, think so. Yep. Into the record would be a question. Yes. Okay. So this is from Brian Boss, B O Z S I K, from 18 Clover Leaf Lane. And this was addressed to Mr. Longstaff and Mr. Chase in the planning department. Hello, I am writing about the pending application to the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Scarborough Fish and Game App Association that has that is being reviewed on March 11th. I would attend the meeting in person if possible, but unfortunately only discovered this agenda item this weekend and I'm traveling for work. Could you please forward this to Zoning Board Appeals for consideration? My wife and children live nearby and we are very concerned with the proposed enlargement of the facility. Upon review of the activities of the club today, it does not appear the proposed expansion is within the bounds of their historic use. Other neighbors have voiced similar concerns. Acknowledging the club has been around for some years, it is just as important to acknowledge that that town around this facility has also changed and grown. The facility today is now surrounded by dozens and homes built within the zoning and comprehensive plan set by the town of Scarborough that have allowed and encouraged such development. The most striking information game, gained from reading the recent news article on the expansion in our local paper was that this association appears to be used by more people from outside Scarborough than inside. Besides the Scarborough Police Department, 46 other separate regions and government agencies from outside Scarborough use the facility on a daily basis from which one would assume the club receives revenue or dues from the non-Scarborough organization. In this month alone, the following agencies outside of Scarborough are using the facility per their online calendar. South Portland PD, Falmouth PD, Department of Homeland Security, Maine Department of Corrections, United States Coast Guard, and U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency. I ask the Zoning Board of Appeals consider this request solely as the scope of the expansion truly is not compatible with the taxpaying neighborhood around this club. For context, if there are discussions about noise abatement, indoor firing range, air purification and safety, lead pollution and safety management, this is a well-funded organization. Based on their most recent tax filing, the organization intakes $650,000 per year in income as tax-exempt organization with a stated mission of firearm safety and conservation. Regards, Brian Bosick. And as I said, that was the only information that we received. So we will close the public hearing, and now the board will do their findings of facts and conclusions of law. So we'll go through and do ours now. A, the 
proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air or water or other aspects of its design or operation. Mr. Hebert. Um, they stated that uh, they're going to be using an existing septic system and just expanding that um, in place. Um, they've stated previously that um, a lot of the ammunition, or some of the ammunition is non-lead based, especially on the inside of the uh, pistol range. Um, so that really wouldn't have an effect on the septic system there. Um, and historically, they've shown that they've been cognizant of their environmental surroundings. So I don't see an issue with this. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mr. Bork? I agree. I absolutely agree. Yeah, yeah, my understanding is that we're not expanding, we're just improving, and I think improvement makes things better. Um, all in favor of A being met. Next slide. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Um, the applicant has stated that the purpose of this expansion is not to expand their membership. Uh, they're only seeking to uh, improve upon the building currently in place to better suit the existing members. Uh, nothing in the application has seemed to indicate that they're going to be uh, expanding membership. Um, they're adding a couple lanes to the indoor pistol range for the purposes of hosting tournaments there, um, not for the purpose, as indicated in the application, for expanding um, their membership. Right. And he testified tonight that enrollment is actually down a little bit. Right. So this is just you know, to improve for the members. Also, um, I know I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Bork? Uh, I would also add that uh, there is an existing, substanti substantial existing uh, gravel roadway and a parking area within uh, the property and in order to handle not only the traffic we have now, but the small incremental traffic. Uh, I see no problem here at all. I think the eight years I lived back in that area, I, I, I even saw someone turning into that road or pulling out right. of it. Yeah. Ms. Warren? <laughs> well, you'd hope that everybody who turns in pulls out of it. But <laughs> 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 Sorry, I couldn't yeah, let that one go by. Probably the safest, <laughs> probably the safest place to be in Cumberland. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I see where there's really, there's, they've already stated that there's not going to be any change to membership or volume of use. I think it's, it's really just a more a, a basic accommodation for the people that are using this, the services there. And, and um, <coughs> so I can't see where it would justify or, or create any additional issues on that, on vehicular or pedestrian traffic. Well, and I think Scarborough's becoming very cognizant of its aging community, and I think you're just one of the many organizations that are trying to accommodate that. Um, all in favor of B being that. See, the proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than the existing uses in the neighborhood. Um, as was implied, there's a significant amount of uh, law enforcement that goes in and out of there already um, that um, would not create any public safety problems in there, certainly. Uh, they've also indicated that the historically the way that they've constructed specifically their outdoor areas is in sensitivity to the public safety, whereas they tell you where to shoot, where not to shoot, certain windows and areas that you can go. Um, so they've demonstrated um, the responsibility of keeping things very safe there. Uh, I would certainly concur, and uh, the applicant has clearly shown uh, that safety is the ultimate concern.
Yeah, I, um, I think that not only, not only do I not see any increasing public safety concerns, I actually see this as being kind of a beneficial thing to have these, this particular site in our immediate community where our, our law enforcement and military and so on can actually practice here. And I also see where there's a, a definite improvement by not sending our kids to Augusta on a school bus to, to go compete or, or, you know, have people going an hour away from uh, to be able to compete at these tournaments. So I do appreciate that. Can I add one thing? Yeah. Uh, just with respect to uh, Mr. Bozick's uh, email that they had sent in, um, their concerns about noise abatement, um, mm -hmm. air purification, safety, lead pollution, safety management. Um, the applicant stated that they're very cognizant and uh, proud of their safety management program. Um, this is an indoor range expansion as far as the firearms are concerned, so um, they, they're not asking for additional areas outside for them to shoot. This is all contained inside of a building. So hopefully that will uh, provide some um, uh, comfort for the person who wrote in. And one last thing. Mm -hmm. And to piggyback on that statement also, um, with regarding lead, you said that you don't even use lead in your... In Not your in the indoor range. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think that should be noted as well. Right, again, the proposed use is they're not changing the, the use, they're just... Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so we do, yeah, we, do, we do have competitive 22 leagues, so there is a percentage of it that does use lead. And then they also testified tonight that they haven't had any sort of noise, noise complaints or police coming out because of issues regarding neighbors or incidences on the property. Um, all in favor of C doing that. D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Uh, they've indicated that there's no nearby stream. Um, the areas the grade in the area is generally flat and the building expansion is going on an already impermeable s surface that's been approved by the DEP. Um, so there is no significant risk or high risk of sedimentation or erosion or effect on the nearby water supply. Agreed. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. If it's good enough for DEP, I, I think it's good enough for us. All in favor of D doing that. E, the proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Um, the building is pretty far away by itself. Um, obviously, they have bought residential properties, but the building and the, the principal facility itself does not directly abet any residential homes or things like that. It's also pretty hidden in the woods um, <clears throat> off of uh, Holmes Road. So the, any kind of construction or work or the size of the building would not be seen from the road anyways. Uh, such a small expansion to um, an existing building on a, a very large lot uh, really has no impact on the neighborhood whatsoever. I agree. Yeah, there's no use, no change to the use, um, and set far back, I, I don't see any issue. All right, there's a big buffer there, and we've heard tonight that there's really not going to be a change in the use. There's not going to be a in more intense use of it. Um, we've discussed noise control. Uh, all in favor of E doing that? F is not located in the shoreland zone. All in favor? G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. I believe they provided a tax card showing ownership to the Scarborough Fish and Game Association. All in favor of G doing that. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Um, they've demonstrated or they're providing, they provide information. They have hired um, uh, design professionals to prepare plans, site drawings. So um, they have the 
technical ability to design the structure, um, site the structure properly, work with DEP applications, and um, build the structure. Actually, I'll note in the question before, they actually said that they have no mortgages or encumbrances on the property either, which would yep. mm -hmm. apply to this one. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Agreed, and I'll just bring up the <coughs> fact that uh, Mr. Boz Bozic's letter actually even talks about the type of income that they have for the property, so I think that substantiates a little bit of that as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. All in favor of H doing that. Proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Um, they've indicated that um, they're not seeking to change the current hours of operation, that they've historically been operating at this facility for a significantly long time. Um, with respect to the, uh, the letter that was sent in, um, it hasn't been indicated by the applicant that they received direct letters, um, nor have there been any other letters here from the town indicating any complaints um, regarding, the, uh, regarding the operation of the gun range, of the firing range. Um, one, uh, you know, if there are a significant amount of people who do have an issue with it, they would, there would be a lot of letters being written to the town, mm -hmm. there would be people showing up and speaking to Brian, and there hasn't been any indication of that. Um, and, and I'd like to add that the, the applicant is not really uh, requesting any kind of a change in the uh, external use. And in fact, that's in full compliance with the DEP. And because of the way it's structured, uh, you know, the sound is all going inward, as opposed to out toward the neighbors. And certainly there's no impact on the neighborhood whatsoever with, with the expansion of the existing noise of building. I have nothing to add. Um, the only thing I think I'd like to add is just that they've been operating since 1948 and, and there's still nobody in this room that's complaining about it. I, I think that speaks volumes mm -hmm. and I think that, um, you know, they're, whatever they're doing, they're, they're, they're being very good about self-preserving themselves and making sure that they're they're good neighbors, and um, I think we should reward that as part of the common name has it. Can I add one thing? Mm -hmm. um, also, I, and Brian, forgive me if you've mentioned this already, but uh, and Chamel Torre passed from the uh, system town planner, passed along uh, the panel planning board granted a positive advisory opinion for the proposed project at Scott Roper's meeting. Correct. So we so want to make sure that that's in there as well. Thank you. What they're proposing is compatible with what they've been doing all along. Um, right. One thing that came to mind was, you know, is it compatible with what's going on in the neighborhood? Well, we just talked about Beach Ridge, which actually is a lot louder and carries a lot farther and operates a lot later. So is it compatible? It's actually more compatible than its neighbor. Um, all in favor of I doing that. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll move to approve appeal number 28. Uh, 2681 as presented. And seconded. Is there a discussion? All in favor? Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. I don't miss my well on the other side of Front 95. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll tell you. laughs> Madam Chair, the next step is for them to go back to the planning Planning. Board for site planning yep. Approval. So that's where Good we'll luck, guys. Our second appeal is a special exception permit application for five landmark road, and we have Shelly Moraine. Awesome. 
Thank you. Well, thanks so much. <coughs> No, that's perfect. You saw it. We'll just read it in and share it. That's great. Thank you. So while Shelly's passing that out, I'll just give you a quick rundown on the appeal. Um, this is a special exception home occupation appeal. Um, it, it is an after-the-fact appeal, but that is not a, a, a criteria. Shelly is here to correct a situation where she was misinformed and, and has actually been operating the business. I'm not exactly sure how long you've been operating the, the photography studio, but I've never heard a complaint about it or had a call about it or, or anything else. So she's obviously done it with a <coughs> respectful and uh, in quiet way. So um, she's now trying to correct the record to make sure that everything is legal and up to date, and I applaud that. Anytime somebody re recognizes that there's something wrong and they want to correct it, that's a good thing. So mm -hmm. that's what I she's agree. here to do tonight. Good evening. Hi, I'm Shelley Rose Morang from Five Landmark Road in Scarborough, and um, Brian said it perfectly. I'm here to correct the situation and to get approved. Um, I had about 18 years ago, we had our house built by Groovy Builders, and Susan Groovy said it was um, fine for me to have the um, a small home uh, studio. So that's what we, um, that I have a room that I use there. Um, most of my work is um, on location. I do high school senior photographs, um, weddings, um, family portraits. So a lot of work is at people's homes. And I do some photography at my home. This is all inside the building. Um, so I have never had any complaints with any building today. So. <laughs> OK. So what we'll do first is we'll go through the application for special exception. I'll um, we'll read the questions. If you want, you can just read the answers in and elaborate if you want. So the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air or water or other aspects of its design or operation. Um, I edit photos on the computer. Um, a lot of my photography is done on location, the beach, clients' homes, and I do photograph um, some people at my home, and this will not create any um, unsanitary conditions. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Um, again, I, I meet clients on location. Um, I work on my computer at my home editing photographs. Um, I'm a very low volume, one-on-one -on -one with clients um, when I am meeting them at my home. This doesn't create any unsafe um, pedestrian traffic or uh, vehicle traffic. I've been at this location for 18 years and have had no complaints from my neighbors. See, the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. I uh, know I have a photography studio. Um, I photograph um, one client at a time and again on location or at my studio with no public safety problems. Um, and I do go to clients' homes or at the beach to photograph. D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supply. Uh, no, my activity takes place within my building inside, um, and again, I work on location also. E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, pro proximity to other structures, and density of development. Um, my office and meeting the clients will not affect the neighborhood. Um, it takes place within the existing dwellings, and again, I've been here for uh, 18 years. Um, the town's never received a complaint from anyone. F, are you located in the shoreline zone? No. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Uh, yes, I have ownership and I am on the title. Which likes you provided us with yes, a copy of your deed. Yeah. Perfect. H, the applicant has a technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Uh, yes, I have been operating this business for over 18 years. Um, I was told from Sue, Sue Groovy that I was able to have a small home office um, studio, and I've never again had any complaints uh, from neighbors. Um, I have a savings account to meet the standards and comply for the I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Uh, yes, no noise, 
no noise and um, day hours, um, working from nine to five. Did the board have any questions on the special exception application before we go into the home occupation performance? I have no questions. Nor do I. Straightforward. I have no questions. Nor do I. Okay. <coughs> So you're also subject to the performance standards of a home occupation. So we'll go through these criteria as well pretty quickly here. And then we can provide your answers. Number one, the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within the building accessory thereto. Yes. Two, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Yes. Three, no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. Yes. Have you, you, don't, you don't have any employees? You never I have had. an employee and she works, um, she assists me on location, okay. she works remotely from home and she does come in and assist me at my home. Okay, so one employee. Four, exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions. Do you have a sign? I don't need a sign, I don't, no. No sign? No. You are allowed to have a sign. Okay. And Brian would tell you exactly what type of sign you could have if you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <Why not? laughs> um, five, there will be no exterior display, nor exterior storage of materials, no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building. Correct, no. Six, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, Vibration, smoke, dust, odor, heat, glare? No. Seven, the traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disrupt the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. No. In addition to the, uh, number eight. <laughs> In addition to off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for vehicles of each employee in the vehicle of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak hours. Yes, I have plenty of time plenty of on parking. my house, yes. Yeah, and you indicated that you have one employee and yes. you have one person typically yes. coming for a photo shoot. Number nine, the home occupation may utilize A, no more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area provided for the purposes of this calculation Unfinished business, uh, basements and attic spaces are not included. Yes, um, it's under 20%. Right, so you said you have a uh, office? A, yeah, it's a room, it, there's a picture, or there's a diagram that I provided. Um, it's 272 square feet, um, and I did provide that on the okay. master grid. What number? Okay, and there's no accessory building, so that's not applicable. Uh, number 10, home, home occupations may include retail sales. Are you doing any sort of retail sales? Um, we sell um, digital files and, and any albums, those are shipped to my clients. But you're not running a store. I mean, this is no, directly no, no. you're selling right no, back to right the client. Yeah, I think, I don't know if I need to go through this specifically because this is not what you do. Um, number 11 is regard into fishermen and lobstermen, which you are not. And number 12 is in regards to motor vehicle repairs, which you are not doing. Madam Chair, I would suggest that perhaps you would, would entertain a motion to accept um, approval for all of the performance standards for the home occupation yeah. as a lump sum, seeing Correct. how I think they've all, all been demonstrated. Mm -hmm. I would uh, move on that motion. A second. All in favor? I don't think we've done the public part yet. Oh, public, the public yes. hearing? Yeah. That's true. That's all right. That's true. We're so good. when the time comes, that motion can be made. Yeah, gotcha. We'll, we'll do it again at that point. If something um, comes up, we'll just practice it. <laughs> do, we, do we have any other questions for the applicant before we do open it up to the public? Uh, I don't. None. Okay. I don't either. So I'm going to open it up to the public. That'd be me. <laughs> Would you like to speak this evening? Who works here? <laughs> <laughs> You did share with us, let's see. Oh yeah, okay. share what, what our meetings. So 
we have an, a letter that she provided with us from the neighbor that I will read in. Let's see. This is from Michael and Angela Galusia. Yes, Galusia. Awesome. At Seven Landmark Road. Uh, Mr. Longstaff, we have known Ms. Rose as a neighbor and successful business person for the past seven years, and she has been residing at Five Landmark Road for the past 18 years. She has been a very kind and considerate neighbor and long-standing self-made business owner in our community. In our neighborhood association, she is one of the residents who always reacts positively and strictly follows association guidelines. With respect to Ms. Rose's business, Shelley Rose Photography, she conducts many photo shoots on location at clients' homes, popular outdoor landmarks, in addition to her home office. We have never had any issues with noise, parking, or inconveniences of any kind. As an abutter, we have never seen a single car parked on the street, nor have we ever noticed more than one or two people at any time entering or exiting the premises. If we didn't know her, we wouldn't even know that there was a home-based business located at 5 Landmark Road. We do not object in any way to Ms. Rose conduct continuing to operate as she has since we have lived here at 7 Landmark Road. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Michael and Angela Galusia. That is a great letter and very mm -hmm. helpful. Um, and so no other phone calls or emails. So we will close the public hearing. <coughs> And as Mr. Longstaff first indicated, I was going to make a motion to accept all of the performance standards for the home occupation. So moved. And second. All in favor? Okay. And now we'll go through the criteria for the special exceptions. A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage, disposal, emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Uh, no, um, everything takes place solely within the principal unit um, that's on the property. They don't have any, um, there's no significant waste that's created. That's all uh, consuming digital photography. Um, so there's no, no dumping of old chemicals like there was 30, 40 years ago. Agreed. The problem is after 18 years, I don't see how there's going to be problems. Agreed. All right, and the activity is, is conducted wholly within the building. <coughs> All in favor of A being met. B, the proposed, use, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Um, she stated that she only meets one client at a time, and uh, as Mr. and Mrs. Galusia uh, had indicated, um, if they did not know her, they wouldn't even know there was a home-based business going on. So there's no real risk to uh, pedestrian traffic that's going on here. And all the work, most of the time, takes place off the premises. Uh, agreed. Agreed. The only reason I know about your business is I've seen it at least three years. <laughs> I think you used to have a sign on the side of your car. Too. I did. And I think it was a, uh, an H2. Yes. Yeah. Good memory. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I, 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 I've got a friend who has a very similar photography business, and you would never even know it existed. So I, I can't see where the, yours is probably any different. Yeah, I mean, this is very similar to the other home-based businesses we have. It's just almost like having a friend over. There's really no difference than having one car pull into the driveway like that. All in favor of B being met. All in favor of B being met. See, the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Uh, similar to my earlier comment, um, no one really sees, there's not a high, high level of vehicular traffic that comes in and out of there outside of any sort of um, normal operation of residential home, whether it's friends, family. Um, Low impact, low intensity. I don't foresee any issues with this, especially if there haven't been issues already. No impact whatsoever on public safety issues. Again, there hasn't been for 18 years, so. Yeah, I have to, I have to assume you're not doing any stunt photography or aerial photography <laughs> or anything like that, just get the, you know, no drones are involved, no. nothing else, right? So we're good. <laughs> Uh, all in 
favor of C doing that. D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Uh, no, it's been demonstrated that it's an all digital business. Um, there's no dumping of chemicals or producing of significant physical waste outside of a normal operation of a home. Agreed. 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 All right, there's no changes happening to the property. She's just clarifying what she's doing inside of it. All in favor of D doing that. E, the proposed use will be <coughs> compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Um, they've shown uh, a, a, a floor plan of their home. They've shown some elevations of their home. It's very compatible, uh, excuse me, compatible with the existing sort of <laughs> homes that are You're in the so area. so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He's making fun. I had a spelling error on the draft. <laughs> I was going to bring it up. I'm just going to let it slide. Just it that Thanks for reading it into the record, oh. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no respect. No respect. I'm the Rodney Dangerfield of COVID. I didn't realize you were getting a show tonight, did you? Yeah, this is good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Matt. Did everyone get a, we're on E, correct? Yes. yes. Did everyone get a chance? I feel good about this. This is okay. <laughs> good. Good. Good here. Right. I mean, again, it's it's no different than having someone over. Um, I really don't think. I think it is very compatible. It's the same. All in favor of E doing that. Or is it compatible? F. Uh, Mr. Longstaff in the applicant has shown us that they are not in the shoreland zone. All in favor of F seeing that. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. We've shown evidence of the, of the uh, deed and ownership of the property. Agreed. 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 All in favor of G doing that. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of the section and comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals as pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Uh, the applicant stated that they have the financial means to uh, accommodate any uh, restrictions or um, conditions imposed by the Board. That's true, not that we're really buying it. And yeah. she tries an H2. Or she did. <laughs> wow, you're really slumming it down. There's a lot of there's a lot of equipment in photography. You need a bigger video. You know. Yeah, I think, you know, it, it's unfortunate that you were misled to think that you didn't need to do this, but I really commend you for doing it now. I think that's that's wonderful. I also can assume that you would not be here before us if after 18 years you were not actually sufficiently making money at it. So I, I'm going to make the assumption that you are financially stable enough doing this that this, is, this particular criteria is not an issue. All in favor of H doing that. I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Yep, there isn't, there aren't, um, there hasn't been any really complaints about noise or anything like that, about the operation that is going on there. Uh, again, it's like any other uh, personal home. Folks take photos around the yard in their house all the time. So it's nothing out of the ordinary uh, and very compatible. Agreed. 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 And she, are you going to photograph us tonight? Oh, <laughs> I could. I have a good cell phone. I can't absolutely yeah. do headshots. Um, I have a good cell phone. <laughs> so, the, I mean, the activity is going to be inside the house, and it's like one client is coming at a time, which I feel is <coughs> compatible. All in favor of I doing that. Do 
I have a motion. I'll move to approve. Appeal number 2682 is presented. I'll second. Is there any discussion? None. All in favor? Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> you're legal. You're legal. Yeah. Yeah. 10 years, you're legal now. There's got to be a joke in there somewhere. Paper sign. Fairly legal. <laughs> there we go. Right. So I can have a sign? Yes, you yeah. can. You can have a sign. Okay. Come see me on Friday. I will. <laughs> see what size that will be. No. Yeah. That's why you, yeah, it's that's why you come to see me. Photos. <laughs> it's a different We have one more item. We do. We do. Yeah, oh, that's right. Um, we have just the. We received a request for an extension. extension. Have a great night. Yes, nice. thanks. thanks. So, Mark Tibbetts from A Plus Tents and Events has written to us in regards to 370 Payne Road. The contractor that was hired to provide the installation of the foundation for this project finished upgrading a septic system late fall. At that point, the foundation installation piece of the project had to be postponed due to the change in the season and the weather. Concrete should not be poured when temperature begin to go below 40, the 40s, as this creates the potential for a freeze-thaw cycle that will compromise the strength and stability of the foundation. This would, in turn, cause instability in the structure built upon the foundation. There are other options, but the cost of these options are extensively high excessively high and would cause the project to be more expensive than necessary. With spring and summer approaching, the conditions will be such that the project can move forward. Therefore, I'm asking for an extension of the permit in order to install the foundation when conditions are favorable once again. Respectfully, Mark Tibbetts, owner of A Plus Tents and Events. Um, what the time period is the automatic six month extension. Is that, I don't I see. Just brought up on the screen the provision in the ordinance that deals with it and it says all permits and approvals issued pursuant to this ordinance shall expire if construction of the building or structure or commencement of the use has not begun within six months of the date on which the permit or approval was issued upon good cause shown. The person or board issuing the original permit or approval may extend its effectiveness for an additional six months. That's a one time only right. extension. Yeah, and I mean, six months seems like a reasonable time period with the summer coming in. It, what do you think for them? I, I, knowing his business, it's very possible that, um, and knowing how busy construction is, it's very possible that he may need all yes. of those six months Absolutely. in order yeah. to get this done. Absolutely. Uh, so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't monkey around. I guess with trying to, you know, uh, shortcut it. Mm -hmm. I just, I just go with the one-time extension. And That's unfortunately, true. if he, if he doesn't get it done in that six months, he gets it back to the board. Uh, for another approval, yep. so I think that's the, you know, that's the uh, motivation for getting it done. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like that approach. I mean, just because from the standpoint of, we're taking time to listen to their application, approve it. It's their responsibility to get it done within a certain period of time, and a one-time extension. Understanding the cons the existing construction climates uh, climate is pretty aggressive right now. Um, willing to willing to let this, willing to approve this. Um, but just being cognizant of, you know, the, the clock is ticking. I think it's important to Madam Chair to, to note that with construction going the way it's going, it's even, gonna be. even if even if you've already, if you're an applicant, you've already talked to a contractor and they seem to be interested in doing your project and maybe you've gotten some prices, by the time you come to the board and get your approval, their schedule may have totally changed. Mm, I'm um, learning. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. I think many it of us have probably change. experienced that. <laughs> so um, it may not be that uncommon for people, and, and it hasn't been in the past, for people to come for an extension. I'm even entertaining trying to propose and amend the ordinance to match the planning board approval, which is good for a year instead of Which makes six sense, months. considering what I've been through yeah. in the last three or six right. months. Yeah. If you can relate Perfect. that, we, it goes pretty quickly. That. Yeah. yeah, I think we brought that up before. We sure did. We had a conversation uh, with and I, I would I'll let you take a, a, a vote on this, and then I want to kind of on the same vein talk about one sure. other thing before we go mm -hmm. on. Okay, so do we have a motion to approve the extension? A motion to approve the extension. And second. All in favor? Okay. Uh, and
just along the same lines as amendments to the ordinance. I wanted to note that there have been a lot of amendments and many of your paper ordinances that you have in front of them may be outdate, outdated in a few areas. And it, it, we're very busy in the office and I know Dorian has not had time to make other copies. So what I was gonna suggest is if you're ever looking for the most current information, the one that's on the website. So okay. when you go look at the ordinance on the website, Jody keeps that up to date. You can always find the latest stuff. For example, it, uh, be willing to bet in any of your paper ordinances, you don't have the marijuana <laughs> licensing <laughs> provisions <Probably not>. <laughs> and, 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 and the use where, where it's allowed. So that's just one example of things that have changed, and it's changing quickly. There yeah. are things mm -hmm. that are amended all the time. So always look at the website for the most recent version. And we may hold off making you another version because we're currently proposing even more okay. amendments. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. And that's why we have this a This is why we really need to go digital. Yeah. And, and in fact, I'll, I'll start using the online version at the meetings instead of lugging my book around mm -hmm. because I think it's just more accurate. Well, it's, it's just so special and important and lugging this book around and opening it up. And out. I prefer using the one that's like five years old. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. It makes Brian's job interesting. <laughs> 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 no, <Nope>, that's wrong. <laughs> the five-year-old one is not debatable. <laughs> it's not debatable, no. Very, very incompatible. <laughs> Okay. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, if there's do we is there anything else? Anything Sorry. else? Mm -hmm. Any other? Uh, that's all I had. Second. Uh, no. Nope. I will mention the shoreland zoning amendments are now in front of council and will be going to the planning board on March 30th. If anybody mm -hmm. is cool. riveted and wants to attend that public hearing just to hear any Four comments. Minutes. Four Different minutes. Different time. At the same meeting. So it's going to be a riveting but you don't need support at that meeting. We don't need support. It's just that what the public comments are. Um, I, I'll probably take take a moment at some time before those amendments are adopted, or maybe shortly after they're adopted, to bring the board up to speed on, mm -hmm. on them. But uh, uh, in the meantime, if anybody is interested in seeing a copy of my decision, I'm sure they should. Mm -hmm. okay. And just to reiterate too, if you would like any consults on how to maybe move this more to an online platform or something like that, please, I, I'm available and I would be happy to, to work with you on that. We'd like to do that as soon as we have the budget. <laughs> I, I, I think you could do it without a budget, yeah, actually, probably, at this point, possibly. to be honest. In fact, it'd probably be cheaper than printing all the paper that we're doing. No question. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Virtual, then. Yeah, yeah, Miss <laughs> Avatar. I'll get my avatar right on it. <laughs> so we had a motion uh, to serve, which was seconded. All in favor. All in favor. <laughs>